Back in the fall, we introduced the Burn Peak Ranger Station, a future vacation rental for mountain bikers, and a fixer-upper to say the least. Since then, we demolished the deck off the kitchen, made good use of the open doorway, and then built a deck worth standing on. From there, the professionals took over, and things are coming along nicely. But we still have work to do. In the dungeon. If we don't provide a secure space for bike storage, guests will simply use the living room. So we need to make this glorified crawl space more functional and appealing. Because previous occupants customized the space to their liking, it's a museum of prehistoric fasteners, with artifacts ranging from railroad spikes to mangled flathead screws. The ceiling's a nightmare, and we're pretty much ripping all the electrical out and starting over. This is also a good opportunity to use waste from the upstairs renovation, to block off the crawl space and patch up a few odds and ends. Now it's time to address the ceiling, especially this duct which makes contact with the door. We're boxing it out so it clears the door and stays out of sight. Everything we have to mount to for the ceiling panels is just completely janky. We're gonna rip down all these furring strips that were here and we're gonna put up all brand new ones because we want the ceiling to be somewhat straight looking. Because this is a basement, we're covering the ceiling with panels that can be later unscrewed to serve as power, HVAC, and plumbing. Thankfully, my father-in-law is here to help, or else I'd need to grow some additional arms. I totally underestimated how difficult it would be to get these panels to fit nicely, but it is, after all, a dungeon. If you haven't noticed by now, we've been relying on battery-powered lights. Even if we didn't rip out the existing fixtures, half the house is being rewired. And so we're finding workarounds. Soon, I'll give a detailed update on the upstairs reno, which we put a lot of time and thought into. And with the ceiling finished, we can finally move on to the fun stuff. My contractor was going to return this extra shiplap, but I'm using it to dress up what will be a really sweet tool wall. Tongue and groove panels are great because they require very little precision to install. Perfect for the likes of me. And I guess Joanna Gaines. So we brought this shiplap into the room upside down. So in order to get the good side out, I've got to walk it outside into the backyard and back in, totally defeating the purpose of bringing it in here. So there was an outlet over here, not anymore. I'm gonna cover it up with a piece of trim. I moved that outlet to the other side of the wall so that we can wire up our LED lights and not see any wires. Time for some light. With this LED accent light and bright shop lights, it's already looking a whole lot less dungeony in here. This foam flooring is a little easier on the back than concrete, so I'm putting it here where our future workbench will be. This workbench is something anybody can build with like two tools. If you have a drill and a circular saw, you can do it. And it's normal framing lumber you can get anywhere, just two by fours and two by sixes. Basically what you do is you make a rectangle out of the two by sixes, whatever size you want the top of the bench to be. 
The legs are really simple. You just use two two by fours and one of them you cut shorter to account for the width of the two by six. And then you put cross supports, slap a piece of plywood on the top. This is gonna be enough for most projects, especially working on bicycles. You do need to brace the legs. I didn't because it's braced to the wall. Many a time have I repaired my bike in a hotel or living room. And so it'll be nice for guests to have a purpose-built workspace. But this room is also for secure bike storage. I need a bike rack that can hold any bike of any size, any wheel size, and a whole lot of them. While it's not pretty, this rack should easily fit eight mountain bikes of all shapes and sizes, and hold up to the abuse of it all. I may add some plastic to the horizontal pipe to keep it from scratching seat rails, but otherwise this is pretty much finished. On to the tools. Almost every one of these tools have been used on my YouTube channel, spanning back to the original shop at Berm Creek. I think that's kind of cool, since every one of these have been on YouTube at some point. And plus, I get to replace what I had at home with brand new tools. Also cool is the fact that guests can try out specialty tools that they may not own. They may even postpone repairs until their visit just to use all this stuff. so visitors can do their part in keeping the shop tidy. I'm including labels behind all the tools, as you may expect from a P-Touch enthusiast like myself. For the grand opening, I'm also including certain supplies to get guests back on the trails, like shift cable, grease, tire plugs, and sealant. Time will tell if keeping this stocked is even practical, but for now, it's here. You may also notice I left one duct out in the open, and that's because it's the designated sticker surface. Whether it's your home mountain bike club, YouTube channel, or trail system, you can leave your mark here on the sticker duct, exclusively at the Berm Peak Ranger Station. And with that, this shop is mostly ready to go. Time to stare at it. We still have a few things to add and change here before the grand opening, but we've still taken an absolute dungeon and turned it into a bright and functional shop with abundant bike storage. On a personal note, this was my first real project since the recent surgery. And while being on my feet has been physically painful, it has been therapeutic mentally. I'll be testing the waters on my mountain bike soon and hopefully riding at a decent level by the time the ranger station opens. Until then, the projects here have only begun. If you want to follow along with my vacation rental project and more, subscribe to Berm Peak. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with someone who's totally wasting the space in their basement. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Pretty cool. Let me close the door. Why are these three green? See if I can get them to not be green. There we go. Nice.